All right, so after trial and error and finding the different panels that tell the story, these are the ones I've settled on. I am now going to turn on that white background. And I can use command semicolon to turn off the guides, even though they're still there. What I do not want you to do is have any background other than a white background. And the reason is, white background means no printer ink. 100% white means that it will be the paper that shows through without any printer ink. If you do anything other than 100% white as the background, then it will be printed with printer ink. And that wastes a lot of ink to just do like a, a gray or a, an off-white. So, these are my, this is my finished storyboard. That's the whole thing, kind of floating there. And it is... 30 by 40 inches by 100 pixels per inch. If I do not resample this, if I wanted to print it for my midterm, I would turn this into an 8 by 10 print. So how would I do that? I go to image size, I uncheck resample, so that it doesn't affect my pixels at all, and I just change the width to 8. And that now it's 8 by 10.67 at 375 pixels per inch, which is better than standard minimum print resolution, which is 300, right? And it's bigger than 8 by 10. That extra height is just because these dimensions are a little bit bigger than I need. So we would print that on an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper and then mat it in an 8 by 10 mat, which is actually 7.5 by 9.5 inches. And we would get a beautiful example. There's one right in the center of our crit rail. You'll see an example of a printed out animation storyboard. Right? So that might be one of your midterm projects. So 8 by 8 by, or 8 by 8 inches, 30 by 40 inches by 100 pixels per inch is big enough to print at 8 by 10. Now I'm going to save it as a JPEG. So I export it as a JPEG. That's going to go to Canvas. And remember, this is saved with a different name. So I'll just make sure it's saved as your refined storyboard. Okay, now I can close it. I can close Photo P. I go to, to Canvas, and I'm going to post it. My refined storyboard, my last requirement. And you don't, you don't submit resubmissions until the original deadline has passed. And since tonight is the deadline, and I like this one more than this one, I'm just going to delete this one. because they don't look different enough to kind of merit having to look at them side by side. And I'm going to post my next requirement. So your first requirement is your rough storyboard sketch. Even though there's always some students that skip that step and just do their animation, it's worth it now to look back and do a quick rough storyboard sketch and realize it would have been a lot easier if I had that plan starting up. Yeah, for sure. Okay. But this is a way of just sketching to conceptualize your story. Yeah, yeah. So the, the original sketch is essential. Sometimes students skip it, and they just start animating and seeing what happens. But you can see how it's so important to know what your beginning, middle, and end is going to be because of all the planning involved in your timing. Gotcha. Okay, and now I need to take from my downloads, my storyboard JPEG, mark it as orange. It's my online format. So these are the, the three things that get turned in. And then Hannah, you had a question? It's absolutely fine, happens all the time. So my rough storyboard's a little different than my refined storyboard. And my animation has like flames in it and my rough storyboard didn't have that at all. So ideas come to you. But what that rough storyboard did was give you your, your kind of basic story, you know, your basic outline to follow. And then often once we know we can meet those keyframes, then we might elaborate and do a little bit more.
Yeah. It, it can always be added on, right? Like with all, any of these compositing projects. You can always go back to your PSD files, add more into frames, add more into assets. And this could be just the first scene of a much longer animation. Like maybe next semester I pick this up and then I take his shaved face and I turn him into a cat. You know? And then I take that cat and I pull the hat down. I, I get pretty bored of the hat being pulled down. But you can see how it could just continue now that you have those skills. So this is time-based. And the presentation critique question that I want you to answer about your work once you post it is do you think your transformation is more clear in your GIF or in your refined storyboard? So the transformation is the disappearance of that mustache, right? So for mine, I think it's pretty clear in both, but I think it's a lot more of a focal point with movement. So the, the advantage of the time-based media, where I as the artist get to control the viewer's perception of time and what they see when, helps me and helps the viewer to really notice that the mustache is the thing that changes from beginning, middle to end. When I see it in the storyboard, I notice that at the beginning he has a mustache, at the end he doesn't have a mustache, but I'm more focused on the, the change of the graphic with the hat. And what's so interesting is there's really nothing that tells me the hat gets pulled down and then back up, except for really carefully choosing frames that show it at different heights. But notice how this one is at the same height. And so that movement can get halted when you don't see it in a time-based media. So I might decide at any time to go back to my Refine storyboard, open it up in photo P. That's why we also save the refined storyboard as a PSD, right? And I might decide, oh, I don't want that hat to be at the same level. So if I select this layer, let's see if there's another layer I can use. Or maybe this one, let's choose the hat at a different level. But I only had three frames of pulling the hat down. So I just don't have a whole lot of options. But what I could do is maybe replace it with this one. <laughs> ah, where are my guides? I'm getting a glitch. There they are. All right. So now I'm just going to stick that one in. And then I might think, oh, you know what? That tells the story a little bit better. So your refined storyboard has all of those options kind of built into it. And actually, I do think that tells the story a little bit better. So I'm going to update it. Because it's got all the options of all the frames. You're just deciding which ones to highlight to best tell the story. And so you're trying to pick the ones that best showcase the animation. And I think this does a better job. So now I'm going to save this. I've already saved it as a PSD, right? It just overwrote my original. And now I'm going to output it as a JPEG. And that goes to downloads. And then when I move it into my folder, it's going to ask if I want to replace the original one. And I do. So this is my new one. Mark it orange, can close photo P. And now I'm going to edit my post because it's before the deadline. It's not a resubmission. It's just a submission, but I'm making it the best I can make it. And I'll replace this with this slightly changed. But honestly, I wouldn't have made that change except for thinking about that presentation critique question. So we're now going to go through your work from the bottom up, and you're going to tell me whether you think your transformation is more clear in your refined storyboard or more clear in your animated GIF. The benefit of the refined storyboard is it looks nice and clean, right? But the GIF has motion, <laughs> has timing, and used effectively is a really powerful tool to focus your viewer. And that's where we'll leave it.